the path of knowledge is the way to jannah the path of knowledge is the way to jannah jannah alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin was salatu was salam ala sayyidil mursalin amma ba'du fa'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalatu wassalamu alayka ya Rasulullah wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Habiballah. Assalatu wassalamu alayka ya Nabiyyallah wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Nurullah. Viewers of Madani Channel, Alhamdulillah, bifadlihi tutimmu salihat. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is only His grace and His virtue that we still continue with the good acts. And by His virtue again, all good acts, they will come to complete, completion. We will complete them. It is not that we boast. All it is from Allah, Rabbul Aizat wal Jalal. Man salla alayya wahida, a hadith goes, the one who sent one to root, Allah, Rabbul Aizat wal Jalal, will shower him with ten special messes. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Viewers of Madani Channel, it is the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that through this Madani Channel, we are now having what we call a home university, whereby on the comfort of your couches, you will be sitting down, enjoying, relaxing, and listen to this typical of discussion which is full of knowledge. Of course, some of the discourses which are coming, broadcasting in Madani Channel, these are university stuff. Whereby other people, they have got to go to university, sit and pay a lot of sum of money. But now with technology, if it is used for the good, will yield what is good. So this is from among is them that you are sitting on the comfort of your coaches and you are listening to the Islamic knowledge, we thank Allah for that. I welcome you again to my series, The Path of Knowledge. And in the following episode, we are going to still continue with the virtues of knowledge, the superiority of knowledge. Like in the previous episode, we were giving the uh, virtues of knowledge and only we did focus verse 18 of Surah Al-Imran. Al-Imran. Today we are going to continue from where we left. We are now trying to look at the verses and other different chapters from the Quran to show the importance of knowledge, its superiority and its virtue. Without wasting much of your time, let us try to revive our intention before we start. Niyatul mu'min khayru min amali. The intention of a believer is better than is better than his action innamal a'malu biniyati all our actions are none other than to be judged except with our intention so let us not waste much our time or take our deeds to waste by not intending what to please allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let us intend what that which will please our rabbul izzat wal jalal before we start and as a point of benefit we say that each and every act which we start by not mentioning the, the name of Rabbul Izzat al Jalal, that action is void of blessings. So we said Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim upon our commencing. Then we send Salatu was Salam on the one, the master whom we are commanded to send salutation and the rude unto him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from among those people who respect and love our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A poet said, Allah wa salaman wa salabil hurma. Those people who reached and who attained the goals, they did that only nothing except by the respect of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And those people who did not reach the objective, they did so by failing to respect the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So let us try, whenever we have got a, a time, and we must have a time, let us not say whenever we have got a time, things like this, we must find time to send some durood, some salutation, and also try to make as much duas into crying the court of Rabbul Izzat al-Jalal. Again today, 
the verse which we are going to explain, we are still in Surah Al Imran. But we are going to take another verse which is different from the verse, verse which we are explaining. Today we are explaining a different verse whereby Allah Rabbul Izzat wal Jalal said, Inna ma yakhshallaha min ibadihi al ulama with a dhumma. Al ulama with a dhumma. Which means that verily those who fear Allah from his servant are the scholars. The term we say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bear witness with the scholars. That he started to bear witness himself, then the angels, then the scholars, he put them dead. Then in this verse again, we are being told that those who fear Allah are none other than the scholars. This verse, you've got something in importance which we must learn. In Nama, it's a particle in Arabic. What is the use of in Nama? In Nama, it is for negation and affirmation. We negate that. You know, when people translate this verse, they say that only those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the scholars. They put it light. But if we study the Arabic language, we are going to see the serious of the matter. In Nama, what is in Nama? In Nama, you know, we are negating. Actually, the verse, it means none other than the scholars fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. None other than except them. There's negation and there's affirmation. Where are we getting the negation and the affirmation from? That only that verse, that, 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 that particle, in Nama, in Nama, it gives us the affirmation and negation. Because they say the scholars of Arab, the scholars of Loha, yani Arabic language, that in Nama is one of min adawatul hasr. In Nama, min adawatul hasr. It is one of the, you know, the tools of a hasr. We shall explain what is a hasr later. And in Nama is one of them. What is Allah hasr? Allah hasr is ithbatul madhkur wa nafyun lima ba'dahu. It is to affirm what is mentioned and to negate what was not mentioned. It is to affirm what is mentioned and to negate what was not mentioned. So here, what was mentioned is the scholars. That the scholars, only the scholars, they are the ones who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we negate it from the rest of it. We had only, you know, Arabic lesson, Nahu. That's why they say that it's important to understand the lisan, the lisan ul Arab, the Arabic tongue. Sometimes, whenever we want to understand the Holy Quran better, the, our, our scholars of Allah, Sunnah, wal Jama'ah, they give us this explanation after scrutinizing all this, that's why it is not allowed to give tafsir or ra'i, to give tafsir from your own head. Because there are many things at stake whenever we look at the Quran. So, in nama, in nama min adawatul hasr. It is one of the hasr particles. And what is al hasr? Al hasr, it is ithbatu madhkur, to affirm that which is mentioned, wa nafyu lima ba'ada, and to negate anything beside it. This Ahadatul Hasan to also, also come to the hadith which is well known to all of us. Hadith Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Hadith niya. Inna ma la a'amalu biniyyat. Inna ma it comes. What it means? The deeds are nothing except the intention. No any deeds. All the deeds are, are, are rejected. All the deeds. Only the deeds with intention, they are the one being accepted in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because of inna ma. That is the work of inna ma. For all the students who, un, who, who learn Arabic, they un, understand this particle, in Nama. So we are trying to explain it because from the day one, we say that we, are, we want to try to make sure that we don't leave any stone at, unturned in explaining the virtues of knowledge. So we want to give you these tools or some of how the Mufassirina goes about to define or to explain the Quran. So from this, we understand that Fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was negated from anybody else and it was affirmed only from the scholars. They are the ones who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And not only that, number two, the way this verse is set up is unique. This is one of the verses whereby Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set it in a unique manner. That's why we call it ijaz, yani ijaz, the, 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 miracle, the miracle nature of the Quran, ijaz, the Quran is a miracle. One of these verses only. It can point, if anybody who knows Arabic, will come to conclude 
that you know this verse only you know it, it can make you not to doubt the Quran this verse only that's why you know Ijaz al Quran it's a miracle the order which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in Arabic language the order is that first you bring your verb then you bring subject then you bring the object that is the order in Arabic language you mention the verb first then bring the subject then last follow it with an object so we call it VSO in English verb subject order for example akala imuranu khubzan akala is the fi'lun madhin is the verb mabniyun la fatha akala is a verb well fa'il the subject imuranu is the subject khubzan is the object what was eaten so we say that the verb first then the subject then the object this is our arabic word now but we have got something in arab we by taqdimu ma kana haqquhu ta'akhir now to take the object and you put it first rather than the subject this they do so to show that is part of hasr also it's form of hasr it will come also to affirm something and to negate something it's a part of hasr when we take the object and we put it first immediately after the verb and we put the subject last that is part of tah hasr now let's see inna ma yakhsha allah yakhsha is the verb laha is the object now allah was put first here and then the subject of that verb was put last in the sentence min ibadihi al ulama al ulama is the fa'il the maf'ul bihi it's allah which was put immediately after the verb actually normally we go verb subject then object but here allah goes verb object then subject it's part also of hasr it's part of hasr to show that the ulama they are the only ones who fear allah rabbul izzatul jalal so this verse it's verse number 2 which tells us which shows us that only the scholars are the ones who fear rabbul izzatul jalal a poet said to show that the the scholars they are the ones who fear allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so sometimes we explain with this poet to to cement whatever we say the poet said akbarul fitna kabirul fasad kabirul fasad qalim mutahattik wa akbar minha jahil mutanassik the worst fitna the big fitna the big corruption is a scholar who does not practice but the more worse than it the biggest one is a scholar who wants to worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's why it is mentioned in a hadith that faqihun wahidun one learned scholar ashad ala shaytan is more powerful on shaytan min alf abidin than a thousand worshipers without knowledge those who fear allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the best the most those who fear allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually really al ulama from his servants they are the scholars again ah the fadlul ilm it is a virtue to show the importance of knowledge then we move on this are the verses which i selected in surah al amran there are many verses wherein we can talk about the virtues of knowledge it's not only all but it's only this one which we selected from surah al imran we by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the importance of knowledge now we go to virtue number 3 was that virtue number 1 it was that verse, verse which i quote, quoted from surah al imran whereby we mentioned some sub virtues which we derive from them then again i mentioned this verse from surah al imran again and uh, some virtues that is number 2 now number 3 from the verses is way by allah rabbul izzat wal jalal al wajhu thani fi tafdhil al ilm wal wa ahli vechu number 3 yeah it's now vechu number 3 on showing the importance of people of knowledge and knowledge and its people al jahl wal ilm la yastawiyan knowledge and ignorance they are not equal they are not same we are not allowed to compare between knowledge and ignorance 
because knowledge is best and ignorance is worst. So there's no any compa comparison between knowledge and ignorance. This is a virtue enough to show the importance of knowledge. Anahu subhanahu wa ta'ala, verily Allah Rabbul Izzat wal Jalal, nafa taswiyata, he negated, he refused the equality baina ahlihi wa baina ghayrihim, between the people of knowledge to compare them with anybody else. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he negated it in the Holy Quran. Allah Rabbul Izzat wal Jalal negated it in the Holy Quran that we mustn't compare the people of knowledge with anybody else. He negated it in the Holy Quran. كَمَا نَفَ تَسْوِيَةَ بَيْنَ أَصْحَابِ الْجَنَّةِ وَأَصْحَابِ النَّارِ And in another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He negated comparing the people of hellfire with the people of Jannah. It comes from the Holy Quran, both of them. Comparing the people of knowledge and the people of ignorance. And comparing the people of hellfire and the people of Jannah. All this sirat, all this derivation is coming from the Quran. But the common denominator between that verse and that verse is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala negated he said that this side don't compare the scholars with the ignorance. And that side don't compare the people of Jannah and the people of Hellfire. There is no any similarity with them. Mathematically speaking, mathematically speaking, we have got a common denominator, then we divide. If there's no any common denominator, we won't divide. And another, another rule is that we group like terms together. That we are not talking on equation, simultaneous equation, Pythagoras theorem algebra, all these things, we group like terms together, then we start to work the, 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 the equation. You come up with an answer. Otherwise, if you start to group like terms and unlike terms, you won't solve the equation. You will have got a long board, but you won't solve the equation. So Allah Rabbul Izzat wal Jalal refused to make equal between the people of knowledge and the people of ignorance. Like how he refused to make equality between the people of Jannah and the people of hellfire. So we just have got to mention the, the, those verses. Number one, say, are they equal, those who know and those who does not know? It's a rhetoric question. It's not the question where I say that no, yes, no, no, no. It's a rhetoric question, which have got only one answer. The answer is definitely no, absolutely no. Say, are they equal, those who know and those who does not know? Actually, this verse is found in Surah Zumar, as we say that verse number nine, but actually it starts with something else. The one who wake up at night and people are sleeping and he start to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he fears Allah Rabbul Aizat wal Jalal and he prepares for the day where he is going to meet. Say, are they equal, those who know and those who doesn't know? That is how the verse starts. That the one who wake up, wake up at night, people are snoring and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala smells is near and he's asking, Almin Mustaghfirin. Is there anybody asking for istighfar so that I can forgive him? So this one who fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is answered that he wake up in the morning, in the, in the night rather, I mean, he start to pray Allah Rabbul Aizat wal Jalal and the ignorant one is sleeping and is snoring. His answer is, is only snoring. And are they equal, those who know and those who does not know? We can see that the, the way the verse is starting from its beginning to its end, there is no equality for the one who know and the one who does not know. It is found in Surah Zumar. This time in Surah Al-Hashr, verse 20, Rabbul Izzat wal Jalal said, La yastawi ashabun nari wa ashabul jannah. Ashabul jannah ti humul faizun. That the people of jannah and the people of hellfire, they are not equal. The people of hellfire and the people of jannah, they are not equal. They are not equal. They are not equal in status. They are not equal in their doings also in this dunya. And they are not equal in their status in the after. Their ranks are going to be different. These people, they are going to be in jannah. And that people are going to be in hellfire. So there is no comparison. Ashabul Jannah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that. Why are they not equal? Ashabul Jannah, the humul faizun. Because the people of Jannah, they are the one who is going to be, and to succeed, I mean, to be successful. Kad aflah al mu'minun. They will succeed. They are going, definitely they are going to succeed. In this one, they are going to fail. So there is no any equivalent between a failure and the one who is going to success. So this again, it's a, important enough to show us the importance of knowledge from the Quran. The importance of knowledge. Al-wajhu thalith, and another virtue of knowledge. Al-jahilu bimanzilat al-a'ama, the one who is ignorant, somebody who does not see at all, is in compared to one who is blind, because he's spiritually blind. He's academically blind. So how can he be equal to the one who knows? 
أنه سبحانه وتعالى فيري رب العزة والجلال جعل أهل الجهل he made the people of ignorant بمنزلة عميان like the people who are blind الذين لا يبصرون the people who does not see at all على رب العزة والجلال يسيد سمم بكم عميون فهم لا يرجعون deaf dump and blind they will not return to the path they are deaf they are dump they are blind Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put the ignorant one as the blind so this shows again the virtue of knowledge that the people of knowledge they are the people who have got sight the people who see actually if we are about to explain blindness the one who is blind is not the one who does not have eyesight that is a minor blind. But the blind man is the one who have got a heart but does not see with that heart. That one is a blind man. The one who, who, who does not have a heart and he does not perceive the guidance with his heart. That one is a blind man. Allah Rabbu Al-Izzat Al-Jalal, he gave us the heart so that we just have got to try to see and to perceive with our heart and try to see the guidance using our heart. If we don't see and use these things to preserve and to know Allah Rabbul Izzat wal Jalal, then nothing we are going to see. For many from the jinn kind and the humankind, lahum qulubun, they have got their heart. La yafqahuna biha. They don't preserve with this heart. So this heart, the blindness, the real blindness, which is very bad, is to be blind in as far as knowledge is concerned. This is again to show the importance of knowledge that the people of ignorance they were put to be in the position of like the one who is blind sallu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam we still continue with some verses of the quran which shows us the importance of knowledge now again another important of knowledge is al jahl min sifati ahl al nar Ignorance is the characteristics of the people of your fire. The people of Jannah, they are not called Juhal, ignorant. It is only the characteristics of the people of your fire. Meaning to say that the one who have got Jahal, he must work out on it. Because if you die on that state, to be the state of Jahal, other things, you know, we are, we are talking about al-ilmul far, the things which are composed on him. You know, like Iman, you die without knowing anything of Iman, without recognizing ma'arifatullah. Ma'arifatu rasulihi al-kareem, ma'arifatu dinihi, ma'arifatu kitabihi. All these things, we just have to know with it and to believe in it. If one is jahl on that, that is very bad. So now, al-jahl, ignorance, min sifati ahal nar It is from the description of the people of your fire. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wasafa ahal al-nar bi jahl. We find in the Holy Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the people of your fire that they are ignorant, all of them. The people of your fire, all of them, they are ignorant. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describe them, give them a wasf, a description, that the people of your fire, they are ignorant. It is because that they were not utilized the ways of learning. You know, the ways of learning, inshallah, I shall try to give a separate chapter on its own, but inshallah, we just have got to pass here. Some of the tools of knowledge, it is mentioned that the people of your fire, they were not using it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَقَالَ تَعَالَ حِكَايَةً عَنُهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is narrating to us what the people of Yawfaya, they are going to say. وَقَالُوا They are going to say when they are thrown in Yawfaya. وَقَالُوا They shall say. لَوْ كُنَّا If only نَسْمَعْ We are people who used to listen in the dunya. وَنَعْقِلْ After listening we used to ponder. مَا كُنَّا فِي أَصْحَابِ السَّعِيرِ We could have not been the people of Yawfaya. فَأَعْتَرَفُوا بِذَنْبِهِمْ They are going to recognize that day they are seen. What is their sin? Their sin of being ignorant. Far away is the people of the hellfire. They, will, they, they, are, they are going to say that they, are, they were used not to listen and they used not to ponder. So from this, you know, the people of Jahannam, they, 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 they admit to their ignorance, that they, they, they used to live in ignorance. That's why they end up living in, the, in, in hellfire. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentioned the tools of learning, that some are to, to, to listen. It is part of knowledge. So viewers of Madani channel, outside there, you have got a, bl a blessed opportunity that at least you are trying to listen to knowledge. The ears were made to listen to knowledge. The eyes were made to read the knowledge. 
the hands were made to touch the book of knowledge. This is the, 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 the usage of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The heart was used to ponder into store knowledge. The mind was made to have fikr of knowledge. But we are misusing these things. Now the eyes, we are now using it to look at the dunya. In the, in the ears, we are now only look, using it to listen to the dunya, the music, the whatever. In the whatever, the hands, we are now using it to touch the dunya. We feel the money. Shagalatna dunya, a poet said. Now the dunya is now making us busy. Be heart in wahaka by changing the notes, counting the notes in the tears. Shagalatna dunya. Now the dunya, it makes us to be busy. Wanasina, and we become heedless. An maswari mal amwat about death, that death is calling us. Nahnu amwat, all of us were going to die. Wama baina, wama baina na the difference between us and the people are buried. It is only, only, only different in our cart, in timings. They are there early, we are going to join them later. May Allah SWT make us to realize the importance of knowledge. We tried a lot, bringing in some verses and trying to put it in Inshallah, in the following episode, I'm going now to summarize some verses because I cannot do justice to all the verses mentioning the virtues of knowledge. I'm going now to select here and there. Then we go to the ahadith, we shall select here and there. And then from the sayings of the scholars, we shall select here and there because knowledge we cannot finish. May Allah SWT bless one and all and may He give us strength and the ability and the love and the ishq to follow an episode with an episode. Sallu ala al-habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad alhamdulillah. The path of knowledge is the way to Jannah.